Okay, Andy, we're recording. Please go ahead. Okay, I'm going to call the uh, Town Services and Outreach Committee meeting of the Town Council to order on February 15th at 10 a.m. And uh, all members of the committee are present. And I believe uh, Ms. Rob Mora is uh, with us as well as Athena. So I'll just uh, first want to recognize that this meeting is being conducted uh, by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but we're making every effort to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via uh, technological means. And I do want to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded uh, and both for uh, visual and audio purposes. Uh, so with that, I want to just check to make sure that every member of the committee can uh, hear and be heard. So uh, just go in order of my screen, uh, Bob Hegner. Present. George Ryan. Present. Jennifer Taub. Present. Councilor Lord. Present. Okay, well, thank you. And um, so um, the agenda today starts with uh, public mm -hmm. comments. So I guess we need to just see if there's anybody in the audience uh, at this point. And there is none. I might come back and see if public comment comes in later. Um, the one person who had said she wanted to offer public comment uh, is not here yet, but I did did have one contact. So um, then going on to the rest of the agenda, uh, I had uh, asked that we try and um, get to the question of the snow and ice bylaw, which, um, Councillor Ryan had uh, brought up as an issue that we ought to address. Uh, first, when I, I was putting the agenda together, I thought we were going to have a major snowstorm on Tuesday, which mercifully passed us by. Uh, but um, Rob Mora is here, and uh, the inspections department. Uh, uh, is the one that has been assigned the res principal responsibility. And uh, so I guess uh, maybe we should start out uh, with uh, Rob just uh, telling us what has uh, happened as far as the uh, inspections department side of it, in informing the public and enforcing the in his observations about compliance. Rob, hi. Morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, yeah, so the, the bylaw was amended uh, mid-2023 and assigned uh, enforcement and responsibility to inspection services. Uh, previous to that, we actually did have, um, you know, pretty usual involvement with uh, sidewalks, but uh, not during the winter months, more related to overgrowth of vegetation, uh, typically in front of rental properties or some of the larger complexes uh, that we would receive complaints for. So we were, we were familiar with the bylaw and the intentions behind it. Um, so, so this year uh, we had a more we have a more active role in it. Uh, I talked with uh, Guilford Mooring leading into the uh, winter season about you know how to respond to complaints or process complaints. And uh, as you would imagine, typically complaints over the years had gone to public works departments. So we uh, we just set up a little internal uh, uh, understanding that any complaints received by public works they would collect the information and forward it to us, hoping to not have the uh, the resident or person making the complaint have it, having to call two different offices. So uh, that and that has worked. There's been uh, examples of that that, you know, we've received directly from public works. But uh, those who are aware of the change also knew uh, how to get in touch with us. Uh, I've actually received myself emails 
uh, direct email or through inspection services, general email uh, complaints about six uh, locations uh, during uh, the January 18th and January 30th uh, timeframe uh, for the two storms that we did have that uh, resulted in uh, accumulation on the sidewalks. Uh, in addition to that, the uh, code enforcement officer, Ed Smith, now who, who took over for John Thompson, also receives complaints directly, and he had four additional locations during that same time frame. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, 10 or so complaints uh, that we responded to this year so far that, that we've uh, made record of. Uh, it's primarily a complaint-driven uh, process, uh, although we are taking the opportunity through our routine inspection of larger uh, buildings or complexes or rental properties uh, that we deal uh, with regularly. Uh, so far, I know that Ed Smith has uh, uh, given information related to the bylaw to the fraternities and sororities because we are regularly inspecting those properties a couple times a year. Uh, he, he did make mention that he has done that. Uh, and the, the goal there is to make sure that their management plan and uh, contract for those types of services include the sidewalk in front of the in front of the property. Uh, our intention is to continue with that outreach whenever we have the opportunity, but not you know it's not its own effort. It really is if we're, we're doing something else related to the property. Uh, what's a COI certificate of inspection, which is a regular routine inspection of certain types of establishments or apartment buildings. Uh, we pass the information along uh, during those opportunities, and we'll we'll then look for you know what do we do next. Uh, you know I have I have uh, definitely uh, would like to have a better presence on the website for filing a complaint with inspection services. Uh, you probably all know we have a complaint, uh, you know, place to file complaints, but it's really kind of buried into the rental. Uh, property, residential rental property pages. Uh, so now that we have this uh, bylaw to enforce, you know, I'd like to get a more general presence on the bylaw on the uh, website for filing a complaint of, you know, the various types. So that's something that I'll continue to work on with IT and, you know, as, as we can get that into the, uh, into the schedule for a priority. Uh, we'll also, um, continue talking with uh, DPW and property owners about another issue we have, which is, you know, what to do about the heavy buildup at intersections, crosswalks, curb cuts that generally is left by snow plows, but, you know, maybe a little bit heavier or more difficult for a homeowner to remove by shovel. Uh, so that's an ongoing conversation that we're, you know, we're asking the town engineer to help us figure out how do we handle that? What, what would be a good protocol? Uh, certainly uh, properties that have services hired with equipment and rental property management uh, are, are equipped to deal with that and have been responsive to that. But there are cases where, you know, homeowners asking, you know, what do I do at this crosswalk and intersection where I've got this giant pile of snow built up from a snow plow? So we're continuing to work on that. Uh, just overall, in closing, generally the the response has been great. Um, you know, you know, usually it's a surprise that there's a bylaw and a requirement that a homeowner or property owner uh, or or tenant uh, you know has the responsibility to deal with this. But it's been a very good response. And uh, of those uh, situations that I mentioned this year, uh, all almost all of them have been resolved immediately in the same day, typically. So happy to answer any questions I can. Thanks. Yes, I'll open it up to questions. Yes, for Ryan. So, um, um, yeah, hopefully you can hear me. Um, my experience has been not quite that. It, it's not been, it's been with uh, residences, actually. It's not with rental properties. Um, I walk up and down Amity Street on a regular basis, a daily basis. And during snowstorms, it's it's quite difficult, and the the uh, fending uh, folk are actually homeowners. Um, when I get to town, I find that the rental properties, the sidewalk is cleared to the pavement. Um, but in between Dana Street and getting to downtown, um, that's not the case. Homeowners simply aren't aware, probably, of, of the bylaw, or simply don't don't pay attention to it. And at least one case I know, the homeowners uh, don't have the physical capacity to clear their 
uh, their sidewalk. Um, so th there's the issue of residences versus uh, rental properties. Um, and so uh, the other issue we had at the at Amity and Lincoln was exactly a curb um, a problem where the snow piled up and you couldn't uh, cross. Basically, the, the lovely uh, flashing signs that have been put in, which are great, by the way, um, you couldn't get to them because there was a pile of snow um, in front. And there's no uh, homeowner there. Um, it's it's really, you know, there's a rental property set back a bit. Maybe it'd be their responsibility. But in that case, I wouldn't have any idea who would be responsible because it's uh, it's not clear um, who uh, I guess would be the abutter. So in this case, I guess it would be the rental property. But it's so far from the property, I don't think they'd even realize that it's their responsibility. So um, it, it's, I don't know, Rob, if you're... It, it, it's residences, I guess, is is the issue for me, um, and the fact that people either aren't aware or um, uh, don't care, um, and at least in the center of town, it's it's a real problem. Jennifer, yeah. Um, yeah, no, my, mine was more. I did want to because I was on GOL last year, which you know really asked that the enforcement be moved to inspection services. So we really appreciate that you took it on. Um, I guess I, it's, I think it's in, in the right place now. Um, I, I also, I think you provided it before, but it would be great to get to each counselor, I guess the, uh, the link or to give to residents if they want to file complaints or report, because I apologize. I sent two residents to you directly. So, um, I don't know if maybe the town manager could include it. He might have in his town manager report next time because I would like to get that link out to residents so I'm um, they're not going to you directly. And in both the cases, the residents that I heard from, the concern, I mean, I agree with George. It, it, I think that residents either don't know or I think many don't have the, you know, are physically able to remove the snow themselves. But in both cases, where residents contacted me recently, it was commercial properties. I think it was between, like by Triangle Street and, and between UMass where there's a lot of foot traffic. So yeah, again, having the link would be really helpful, thanks. Council Lord. Um, thank you. I am, um, having lived in apartments most of my life when I was at the ABC house as resident director, I got a knock on the door once because I didn't know it was my responsibility. Similar to what Jennifer, I mean, and Councillor Ryan are talking about. So I'm wondering if there's like a campaign we can do to let people know this is your responsibility. I know Amherst Neighbors has been connecting like over, there's 500 people that belong to that to connect with if you're unable to, you know, shovel your sidewalk. There's a nice network there that maybe people can also tap into if they're unable. But I think just making the public more aware somehow. Um, so maybe snow alerts. And remember... Shovel your sidewalk. I don't know, but that might be helpful. Uh, so Ryan, your hand is still up. I don't know if you have worked. Yeah, just a direct question to Rob. Um, with the snow plowing, you know, with the smaller plows that do the sidewalks, is there a simple way of simply having them not do what they do? Uh, in other words, um, you know, why do they pile it up there? Uh, is it because there's no other place to put it? Is it because they're just in a hurry and um, they're just not thinking? Um, it would think, I would think there'd be a place they could put the snow. Um, so again, I'm thinking of the Amity Lincoln intersection, which is the one example I know of, but I'm sure there are others. Um, is it, uh, why, why does that happen? I guess is the question. Why is there a blockage? Yeah, so good, good questions. And, you know, I'm also trying to figure that out as well. And why I've asked uh, to, to, you know, lean on Jason Skeels, town engineer a little bit on this, uh, because it's really, you know, they're much more familiar with snow removal than I am for the public way. So I do want to have those conversations and try to understand it a little bit better. I, you know, from what mm -hmm. I gather, there's a mix of both private and town contractors or trucks or equipment being used. Uh, so how do we determine the responsibility is going to be something that we'll need help with. Uh, so I'll, I'll continue to try to get better 
information about that subject and and come up with a way and how we respond to it. Uh, you know, other than that, I think you know the other comments are really helpful. Uh, just so everyone knows, we have really good ways to communicate with rental property owners. We don't for the general res you know residents uh, homeowners uh, unless they happen to have had a building permit or something through our office. So in the past, when we've tried to to reach out to that um, that group of owners. Uh, it's typically done through the tax bill or some other, you know, way that maybe our communications coordinator can help, you know, come up with a a way to get that information out there. So I'll definitely talk with Angela Mills about that and see if there are any other creative ideas uh, on how to get that information out to the non-rental property owners that we we can reach pretty easily. Yeah, uh, George. Do you find that if you uh, have a residence that's an issue that they respond fairly quickly or do you do you even I mean does does Ed actually go and knock on a door and say hi uh, Mr. Jones uh, you notice that your your sidewalk is completely icy and covered with snow and it's your responsibility to clear it or is it by letter or is it that because um, as you said you you're able to reach the rental properties probably pretty easily and directly um, what's the process for a homeowner, say, living on Amity Street, I can think of about six or seven um, that uh, don't do anything when there's a snowstorm. And if someone files a complaint, comes to your department, what then happens next with the resident? Yes, yeah, so if, if we receive a complaint and it's very precise to a property, you know, and sometimes we don't, sometimes we get, I, I think maybe Jennifer mentioned, you know, one of the complaints was uh, on North Pleasant Street between triangle and UMass. So we had to go out there and actually find the areas that needed maintenance. But if we know exactly the location or have a picture that's sent with us, we'll, uh, we'll first try to find a contact for that property owner. Uh, like I said, we might have a building permit on record uh, with, with either email or phone number, and we'll reach out to the owner that way. Uh, if not, we'll knock on the door. Uh, that's exactly what Ed will do, uh, or another building inspector. You know, these are these are, um, you know, uh, responses that uh, are kind of fit in between our other work uh, that, you know, everybody here does have a full schedule every day. So uh, we'll split up if we've, you know, there was a day where I think I got three or four specific locations by email. Uh, you know, we'll look at which inspectors are going in which direction and ask them to to take a look at it. And then again, you know, there's a follow up that's needed in, in, to make sure that uh, it's been taken care of. We did have one situation uh, during that, you know, January 18th to 30th timeframe where it took a couple extra days to get one of the locations in compliance uh, because they were waiting for their service contractor to show up. Uh, but the rest of them, you know, have been very responsive uh, homeowners and uh, rental property uh, management or owners. Uh -huh. Yeah, Rob, if if you go to a house, uh, you know, a, a private residence and the, the people say we'd like to do it, but we, we just can't physically do it. What is the town? What, what's the response to that situation? So I haven't I haven't dealt with that yet. So, um, you know, I haven't had that situation. Uh, we we carry the bylaw when we make that that visit, we explain the owner's responsibility and we ask that we'll ask them to come up with a solution. Uh, it's part of the conversation I want to have with public works. What are the other resources available, you know, in, you know, cases where, you know, uh, an owner either can't afford or physically cannot perform the, the cleanup that's needed. And uh, I, that's something I want to be prepared for, you know, but we don't, we haven't had to have that situation occur yet, and uh, we don't have a clear answer on how to deal with that. I don't know how Public Works dealt with it in the past. Again, those are conversations; those are questions that I have um, to try to get better answers to. Okay. It is Jason, though, who's uh, the one to talk to. It. Maybe, maybe we should be asking these questions also of uh, Public Works. Yeah, Jason's our um, pretty regular contact through to, of Public Works for coordination between inspector, inspectors. So we have a joint inspection meeting, we call it uh, every two weeks. And Jason and sometimes Amy 
uh, joins depending on the subject. But Jason's a regular in regular attendance, uh, fire department, uh, uh, police and our our staff, health and, and other inspectors. So, you know, that's where these types of questions come up. And and it's I think it's on today's agenda, actually, that they're going to start talking about this. But, um, you know, that's a place where we usually, uh, you know, work on these these matters as a group. Okay, so uh, Jennifer? Just a sort of, um, I don't know, curiosity item or whatever, but I've had residents say, why doesn't the town clear the sidewalks? And I just happened within the last week, I came across an article that actually it's a state of Massachusetts thing, <laughs> that Massachusetts basically says residents, property owners are responsible for clearing the sidewalks by their property. So it's not just if you're asked, it's not an Amherst decision as such. Amherst isn't reneging <laughs> on providing services. In that but area. we do have snow plows that do some sidewalks. And it's always been a little bit uh, unclear to homeowners and others as to why they choose the streets they choose and how often they do it or how quickly they do it because it's limited by their physical capacity. And you're talking about sidewalks. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, George? Yeah, just listening to our conversation and thinking about it, uh, something for the committee to, to think about it. It's. Uh, uh, we might want to invite uh, Jason or someone from DPW and talk a little bit more about the challenges they face. Um, it does seem to be sort of falling between two stools, and that just may be the nature of things. But that's something for us to think about. I'm also picking up on Hollis' comment earlier that um, this may be the real, if we really want to address this, and this again is for the committee to talk about, we don't need to keep Rob here for this, but um, we might want to look at, at, a, at a lower, grittier level, uh, neighbor to neighbor, uh, what can be done through outreach. We are the town services and outreach committee. I'm never quite sure what outreach really means for this committee, but um, this might be one area we could talk a little bit about what we might do better in communicating this to uh, the community, particularly to our constituents. I know in my street, Amity, the street that I walk all the way, uh, time, could be a, a test case for the kind of issue with residents. Um, I get the sense that Rob and his folk deal pretty well with the, the rental properties where there's an issue, they know how to handle it. But with residents, it's really going to be a challenge. Um, and as Bob mentioned, um, you've got issues with people who, like I know I have a neighbor right around the corner. They physically can't do it. Um, you know, in the old days, we used to have these big boxes. I'm sure Rob remembers this. I always like that. <laughs> Just go down to the corner of the street, get mounds of sand and, and spread it. Um, these days, it's not quite so easy. But um, anyway, I think something for us to talk about later this morning or at some point, what we can do better in terms of outreach and maybe practically um, to help address this at uh, at the individual level, instead of expecting inspections and, and DPW to solve it, um, it we, we I think we have a role here too. Okay. Uh, last question is: um, Is there anything in the bylaw that you wish was different, Bob, or you would recommend that we revisit? No, not really. I mean, I think it, you know, the title is always the, you know, in question, because I think we probably deal with just as much of the obstructions in the, uh, you know, the, the, with vegetation growth and leaves being deposited. Uh, so I think, you know, as we get another, you know, maybe a full year or a little bit more experience with it, uh, it's a little harder to find in the bylaw for the, that reason, because it's listed under snow and, snow and ice, um, but it actually is obstruction of the sidewalk. So um, that sometimes has been a surprise uh, when we've, you know, cited the bylaw. Uh, but otherwise, I think at this moment, we're, you know, we're pretty clear about what it says and and um, really don't see any need for any changes. Hey, thanks. Uh, Jennifer? Yeah, that's interesting because GOL last year changed it to snow and ice removal or the snow and ice and obstruction of the public way. But since snow and ice comes first, you're right. If you're looking for obstruction, that's not where you're going to look. 
And it's we, just we thought we just, were being so thorough by changing it to include right, snow and ice it, and obstruction. It is it is listed in the index and the title of the section as snow and ice. Um, and as you read know, further, so you get was, into the you get into the obstru other obstructions as you read further. Right, right. No, the, but that's a good the, point because. Yeah. So I, can it be listed someplace? I don't know, listed in two different sections, but we can discuss that another time. So I'm looking actually at it. I'm sorry, Athena. No, Andy. Yeah. Um, it's it. The title was changed to obstruction of public ways yeah. and snow and ice removal. Right. That's Perhaps that didn't get updated in the general bylaws, Rob, but that's the full title is obstruction and snow and ice removal. Is that what you were referring to? It, Thank you. It, it was what I was referring to, and maybe that's just a, um, you know, um, a, a way the document was created because it doesn't read that way or it's not printed that way. I'll check with Sue and see if if that was a something that she missed when she was updating the general bylaws. Yeah, the, the draft I'm looking at says obstruction of public ways and snow and ice removal, but something must have changed. And that should I think that's a good way it should read. Actually, that makes yeah, that's sense. what we changed it to. You change it to obstruction of public ways and snow and ice removal? Yeah, it used to just be, I think, snow and ice removal, yeah, and no, we changed good. it. That, that's what it is then, and that's what it should be. And, and Athena, if she could look into it, that'd be great. I just want a quick question, Andy, if I could, about vegetation. Um, and uh, we, again, on Amity, there are a couple of properties that uh, their hedges uh, obstruct. <laughs> they don't obstruct the way, but they come well out into the public way. And so I don't know what the... the what the decision is. Um, what <clears throat> I would ask them to cut their head should be removed back to the outside of the public way. Um, two people can't walk by in a couple of places. The sidewalk is so damaged that you actually have to walk. You have to leave the sidewalk because the hedge projects out and then the sidewalk is, is uh, recessed. It's collapsed. Um, so I guess someone files a, a complaint. Uh, it's been done actually uh, a couple of times, <clears throat> but nothing has happened. Um, does it actually have to block it completely? Is it is it any kind of uh, presence in the public way um, with vegetation? Yeah, it's it's not um, removal of any vegetation in the public way. It has to be the the inspector looking at it determines if it's blocking access and use of the sidewalk, and then it would be we would ask for the the vegetation be trimmed back to an appropriate length to allow the use of the sidewalk to occur. So um, at this point, Dina is going to check on the title of the bylaw. We might want to reach out to Jason at some point to come and because we want to have him come to a meeting anyway to talk about the uh, issues having to do with um, speed limits and how speed limits are set and some other issues that we might come up with that um, as we reach into some of the DPW issues. So we could come back to it at that point also. I think that uh, I will work on a, when I do the uh, report for the council meeting, uh, I'll send you the draft the entire committee to comment on, but uh, I think the point that we want to raise is the importance of informing the public about the existence of the bylaw and uh, the enforcement mechanisms if there are complaints. So, uh, and encourage counselors to help with that through district meetings and other communications that we have in addition to what we might consider next year for um, what goes into publicity as we get into the into the season. I'm not sure that it, whether we should could we pick on it this year to try and encourage more outreach should be the only question. We fear that one more major storm and enough that we want to do that. Seeing no one wishing to take it up any further. Rob, thank you. This has been helpful um, to, to get a uh, sense of what the 
nature of the problem is and what you have been able to do in inspections and thank you for the, your hard work on it. I know you're making great effort and uh, uh, I think we on behalf of all of our constituents, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. Nice, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. So I noticed that there's one person in the public who uh, has joined us and uh, I don't know, it's a phone number. If that, that individual had been wanting to make public comment, um, I think the mechanism, what is it, star nine? Did you raise your hand? Uh, when you're on a telephone call, Yes, star nine to raise your hand. So I don't I don't see a star, um, raised hand coming up. Um, so that individual's uh, I'm assuming is listening in, but not wishing to uh, offer public comment. George, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up very briefly on uh, Rob's presentation and uh, our conversation. Um, I'm wondering if. Others feel as I do that there is a role for this committee to play, and we're not going to resolve it today. Um, but I, this is something I hear a lot of complaints about, um, at least where I live. And uh, you know what what role we can play in terms of both getting the message out, maybe working with Amherst neighbors, um, and uh, the issue also of of people who simply don't have the physical capacity to do it. Um, inspections is not going to do it for them. DPW is not going to do it for them, and they can't do it. Um, and I know of at least one uh, a, a couple that lives on Amity that can't do it. Um, they could hire someone, um, but it's the kind of small job that, uh, uh, you know, somebody will come with his, with his plow and clear your driveway, but it's it's pretty tough to get somebody then to get out of their truck and, and spend 10 minutes cleaning a sidewalk. That They're not going to make very much money doing that. So um, I, I don't know the answer to this. I'm not sure we want to spend a lot of time on it, but I, I don't want it to pass without at least some... Uh, thoughts from the rest of you, if you have any, about how we might proceed. I don't want to wait a year um, and 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 address this next year um, uh, if we have some thoughts on how we might go about doing it. Yeah, I throw in an observation that Jennifer has her hand up too, and that is that uh, we are having a changing population in the town, and uh, so uh, we're becoming an older population with fewer kids. And uh, you know, twenty years ago, you know, the kids who came around saw it as an opportunity to make money. Um, they don't they don't have that as much anymore. It's rare, and uh, so it's it's hard for an aging population with fewer kids to figure out what the resolution on this is going to be. Jennifer. Yeah, I was just going to suggest, you know, um, putting, it, well, putting the link to, to the, um, that Rob, to the inspections department, if you have, uh, um, do you want to report a sidewalk that needs to be cleared, but also, you know, we can just reach out to our district constituents, talk about district meetings and in newsletters, that it is the responsibility of the property owner, but also maybe to say, like, you know, we, we used to, for the woman who lived across the street, she since passed away, but we always cleared her sidewalk because she couldn't do it. I mean, if neighbors could just help help, help neighbors and, and put that out there, it's uh, pretty grassroots, but it might, you know, make some mm -hmm. kind of a dent. So again, you know, I think if all of us can reach out to our mailing list, that would be a place to start. And I think Amherst Neighbors is also a great idea. Yes, uh... Okay. I mean, that's the kind of thing that I was thinking that I would work in the draft of the committee report as we are trying to communicate to our fellow, fellow counselors on that and then get your comments on uh, the draft. So just, just it'll, it'll be better after you hear your comments. George? 
Does anyone know how you reach Amherst Neighbors? Is there, I mean, obviously there's a website you could, I guess maybe you just go on it and send a question, but is there someone that one can talk to about this or is it just a matter of joining the community forum and raising the question and seeing what comes back? I, I don't use the site. I, I'm aware of it. Does anyone have any familiarity with it or um, how it works constantly? Yeah. And Jennifer? I actually don't, but I know someone who about another matter said that, she, you know, she could get to someone who does the posting. So are there, it's just, I don't know if this person's on, if there's a board of Amherst neighbors and I know that Dona, the North, excuse me, District One Neighborhood Association works closely with Amherst neighbors. So it might just be, I, I mean, I'm happy to find a contact person and bring it back to TSO. That's uh, Lord. Um, I recently became a member of Amherst Neighbors um, at, after a meeting with Dr. Romney and Carly Tartikoff. So I could easily be a liaison or bring messages and connect us with them. Thanks. That's great. Yeah, I'd just be curious what they, they would think about this. If they think they have a role and how it would work. Um, yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, so um, moving on, the Amherst College um, was referred to us as at the last meeting, the sign, and I did not ask Amherst College to send anybody at this meeting. I th thought that what we wanted to do was to get it on the first agenda possible just so that we could have a conversation ourselves about what we think are the primary issues and the questions that we want to raise uh, with Amherst College and other things that we might want to think about uh, in order to come to a recommendation about the sign that they wish. And uh, it, because it was sort of a free flowing conversation at the council, and I, it was a good conversation, but it raised lots of issues. It didn't prioritize issues or do anything of that nature. And I was hoping we could do a little bit more to think about things that we want to look at. One additional um, recommendation that was made uh, came through uh, Paul, and uh, who is not able to join us today because he has a conflicting meeting. I thought Dave Zomack would be here, but Dave is not. Um, the uh, uh, and that was is whether we might also want to consider that saying to Amherst College at some point, if you wish to put up the sign, we would like you to do something for us. And uh, one of the things that uh, came up in that in that uh, brief exchange was. Uh, if there are any signs that we would like them to put on their land at any point, um, acknowledging that a town interest or pointing to downtown or something like that, um, so that people coming from the south and hitting the Amherst College campus would see a sign that we would like to have on their property. Uh, yeah, so those are the kinds of things that I think I wanted to do. So, uh, George, do you have any thoughts on this? Well, what I remember, and others can help me here from the meeting, and I don't have notes, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I've been away, but um, uh, Councillor Haneke raised the question of the size of the sign, as I recall. Yes. And, and Councillor Rooney. And Councillor Rooney was concerned about, and I didn't understand it, but I didn't want to get into it at the meeting, but maybe some of you understood it better, um, that somehow the sign might block the driver's vision when they were making a turn. Um, and I didn't quite see, but that that was a second concern. And now Andy's raised the issue of quid pro quo. Um, we have in our packet um, the reports of, from the various town boards and committees that have looked at it, and no one seems to have an issue with the look of the sign. Um, and the appearance of it. Uh, it seemed to be more a matter of the location, whether it could possibly block vision, and secondly, the size of the sign. Um, 
I personally, uh, we can talk about this, I know, but uh, I'm not too keen on a quid pro quo. Um, I, you know, they've done a zillion signs and this is the last sign. And I think more important discussions are happening at a higher level in our relationship with the college. And I think this is an opportunity for us simply to, you know, help them. This is, I think, the most important sign for them. Um, and it, it re represents, I think, an important connection between the college and the town. Um, so um, I don't know if people have thoughts about the size of the sign. I, I don't. Um, anyone have thought about blocking the vision? I don't understand that problem. I and, think it wasn't... Uh... It may it may have been the size of the sign. I think we'd have to ask Pam, but I think that the word that she was using was distraction. Whether this there sign are so many signs at that intersection, just, Andy. <laughs> yeah, I know, but distracting away from other signs. Yeah, I'm okay. The eyeball. From yeah, the I think I raised the issue about distraction. That you know, people will be coming up Northampton Road will be fixed on the the sign their their eyes would be drawn to the sign and they would miss all the other signs that they might want to make a left turn or whatever um that that's all i mean i just i i do think the sign itself is probably a little too big uh but i don't have an issue with putting a sign there uh the way that they want to put there i think we just need to make sure it's not overwhelming um you know, for the space. And I, I, I did walk by that there and there's a tree that's very close to where they want to put the sign. And I don't know whether it would interfere with the tree or not. So I think we need to just be thoughtful of those things. Sorry to interrupt. Jennifer? Yeah, I thought both Councillor Haneke and Rooney were concerned about this the size, maybe less visually than it, it actually blocking. It, and that's where we would need J Jason's input that they felt it could actually block visibility. I mean, I think that was the greater concern. And then there is a concern, is the sign going to have an arrow or something indicating that the sign is not on Hampshire College, I mean, Amherst College property? That would there be any confusion that the college starts there. I guess uh -huh. it is town land. It's it's part of our common. It is. Uh, that's a one of those peculiarities because it's uh, still south of College Street. So. Yes, but it's not part of, I mean, you, you've you not, when you see that sign, you're not then on Amherst College property or on the campus. Yeah. It looks like that's where the college starts. That's correct. So I, I, I don't know. That doesn't, that seems problematic. Well, I think that um, if I may, um, there's really no other place to put it. If you put it back, I mean, it, Basically, what I think the sign um, represents is the long and deep history and connection between Amherst College and Amherst, the town. Um, and it's meant to catch the eye of someone entering the community. And you're right, it's not actually on town, college land. It's on town land. And we could <clears throat> say, okay, it's got to be moved. Can't be there. It's town land. Um, and that they, you know, I don't see the logic of that. Um, it it's uh, you know, but yes, it's it's actually on our land, and so the issue that's why it's here. That's why it's before us. Uh, give uh, will we give them permission to put it there? Um, I think we should. I think given the larger issues that are going on right now, in terms of the future of the town, its economic and you know status and so forth and and negotiations uh, between the town manager and the college um this is a place where we can make a gesture that uh, i think would be appreciated by the college um would also reflect um as i've said now a couple times the the strong connection between the college and the town it's an attractive sign perhaps we should have someone come and just confirm for us that it's not going to be an issue in terms of visibility um 
because I don't think we can determine that. Um, I don't think it will be, but we probably should have someone who knows that, Jason, or someone who can tell us yay or nay. And I'm sure that the college would would move it or do something to adjust if that were the case. But I don't think it makes sense to um, make an issue about the fact that it's technically not college land. I don't think that would be very productive and could be, yeah. Yeah, I've always uh, wanted to ask, maybe I should next time we have a conversation with them, ask them why they think people are having problems figuring out that that's where, that the camp, where the campus is. Everybody knows that there's the Amherst College, and I think the people who are looking for the college know, know where they're going. Jennifer? Yeah, it's not that it's, I don't want it on our land. I, I, I'm not, you know, this isn't the issue I want to die on, but it, if I was driving into town, I didn't, wasn't familiar with Amherst, I would think that's where the college started. That's what's confusing. And I do share your question, um, Andy. It, has there been confusion about where the college is? But if you're coming to Amherst, certainly for the first time, you think, you know, that's where the college begins. So that just seems a little odd to me. Um, you know, I'm just going to put it out there. We we have a major deficit at the school. It would be nice if Amherst College helped out. <laughs> Could be part of the conversation. Yeah, it was part of Pam's concern. I may have, I think she said, may have said something like uh, she didn't want to do anything that would discourage uh, just non-college people from thinking that that's land that they can use for recreational purposes. And the, that's what the danger of the sign in the indication, the impression that the, it's the beginning of the campus. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if an arrow would be unsightly or something, but it, there should be an indication that I think the purpose of the sign is to let you know that if you keep going down the road, you'll get to Amherst College. But, you know, that actually does look like that's the college where it begins. Uh, uh, George? I think uh, Bob is here for me. Hmm. Bob? Yeah, I, I, th I looked at the other signs that they have um, and they're basically signs on poles that are like little flags saying, you know, Amherst College entrance here. Uh, it seems to me that that would be a way for them to identify that this is where the college begins. They could put them on, you know, both on Route 9 and on 116. And I don't see that this is necessary. I mean, I, I don't have a I, I'm, I'm kind of with Jennifer. I, I don't think I would die on, on my sword for this, but I do think it doesn't need to be there. And I agree with the comments that if this is town, you know, town land, people should feel that this is their town land and they can go there and, and use it um, without getting permission from Amherst College. So that, that's all. So um, is there any purpose in uh, asking Amherst College to come in and it, well, it, giving them the opportunity to talk to us about this issue before we make a recommendation? If I may. Um, Go ahead. Certainly we can do that. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Um, just I've lived in the center of town for 36 years and I walk the common in this area almost every day. Um, and I have never seen that space used ever by anybody, picnicking, whatever, students, out, out of towners, anybody. It's never been used for any kind of public, uh, you know, fair or anything like that. Partly because of Route 9. Imagine crossing that road if you, you know, took, if you took some kind of event and wanted to have it. Um, so it's a space that essentially uh, de facto has become 
uh, associated with the college, but in a matter of, of actual ownership, it belongs to the town. The second thing I'd, I'd just like to say is that, you know, we have now a college president and people at the college talking seriously about um, becoming more engaged and active with the town, perhaps with our schools, with our downtown business. Um, I don't see the point of making a big issue about this. Um, this is a, a, a place marker for them. It, it, it's meant to, to obviously to say to people, here's Amherst College. Um, Jennifer's correct. It's actually not there. It's about 50 or 60, whatever it is, 150 feet further back. So we could say, no, you got, can't have it there because that's not actually where the college begins. But that is the place where it should be in terms of, of, of uh, you know, as a place marker, uh, acknowledging the connection with the college and the town. Um, so I would really strongly urge us to think hard about whether we want to make a big issue out of this or even a small issue out about this at a time when we're hoping that Amherst College um, is going to be receptive to uh, a more supportive and engaged relationship with the town. Um, so that's, I guess, my thought. It's just, uh, do we really want to make a big issue out of this um, when we're trying to do things at a higher level that I think would be much more important to the town in its future? That's the Lord. Um, not to repeat exactly what Councillor Ryan said, but exactly. Until I was on this committee, I always thought that was Amherst College's property, and it didn't really phase me. And then I've been hearing about how, like, Williams College has pledged $5 million for a firehouse in their town, and I'm excited about how we might engage with the different universities. Again, I know it's been attempted and some has happened, but so if, a, if we have a generous spirit, um, or if we're expecting a generous spirit from the others, I would either like to lead with a generous spirit, um, not quid pro quo, just, you know, from a kind place, even though I don't necessarily understand, like, our land, their land. Oh, that's a whole nother thing. But, um, yeah, and I can't, I think it's a great place because you just come up the hill. I'm thinking where else would they put that that would have as much power? Probably, I can't think of a place, not that it's our concern. But I just know that, um, like George said, we're hoping to increase engagement. They have a really, they have access to some capital that could really benefit our town and their students. So, yeah, I'm leaning more towards, you know, maybe having someone from the college would help really explain their point of view. And we, well, no, I don't know. Yeah, it could be helpful. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, Jennifer. I just feel, I, so yeah, it's not fine. It's, um, like I said, it's not the hill I want to die on, but um, I just feel like I have to say the town and the college have been here for a long time. And we're just at the point where we're hoping to engage them to support the town. It's long overdue. I just have to say that. And I agree with that. And, uh, and you know, as far as the signs are concerned, what you'd really think you want to do is to have pointing direction, but it can't be directional pointing sign because it's both directions. And it would really be weird to have a sign with an arrow in both directions on uh, <laughs> the sign. And uh, as far as the quid pro quo, I think that probably that's what I would be intrigued, um, I think might be helpful. It might not be a big um, problem for the college is to have a sign so that people who are coming up Pleasant Street uh, from the south, they, if we had an additional place uh, finder sign that said Amherst downtown straight ahead is similar to what is up at the roundabout in Hendrick Park. Uh, you know, it might be helpful to do that and we might want to talk to Chris Prestrup and ask her because um, she's the one who's been kind of overseeing the uh, wayfinder signs the town whether it would be helpful for the purposes that they had identified in the wayfinder signs to have that additional sign. 
uh, but you know, I don't, you know, it's, it's a small, it's a small ask that doesn't, doesn't necessarily know that it even needs to be connected, but you could probably ask the college that question, even without the sign, the big sign that they want. Um, but uh, as far as the distraction is concerned, I mean, we can ask Jason that question, but I think that the odds are that it's not going to be a an issue. So, Jennifer? Yeah, and do, <clears throat> I would imagine that Jason's working with Amherst College just to ensure that the concern about the sign obstructing any visibility, should we assume that that, that between the professionals, they will ensure that there's no obstruction of visibility? Uh, probably can ask him, but. Yeah, I think we'd want, we'd want to confirm that with him. It could be done either by having him here or we could have the chair just reach out, confirm it. But I think you're right, we should confirm it. It was raised by a counselor and it's a legitimate question. So I think we could, could find, get an answer. Doesn't necessarily mean he has to be here, um, but we should get an answer on that. What about the size of the sign? Is that is people really worried about that? I, you know, it, I mean, only who, in terms who, who of we, visibility. Who, yeah, right. Exactly. I don't. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, one counselor expressed concern about it. I don't have a concern about it unless it's visibility, and that can be answered by Jason. Um, and uh, also, the distraction issue um, could be answered by Jason. So why don't we uh, just make some inquiries with Jason and maybe with, uh, as, as far as the quid pro quo question, ask Chris whether it would be helpful to have an additional wayfinder sign pointing to downtown, similar to the Kendrick Park sign coming from the, so the people coming from the south would know they're heading in the right direction. Um, and if she doesn't think that that's important, then it's not worth pursuing. And uh, leave it at that. Um, the other issue that was on the agenda today was uh, the carryover report and our immediate goals. And I guess there are a couple things I want to uh, just report on. Uh, I asked um, Mandy uh, Haneke about the uh, what's going on with the lighting proposal and whether she has heard anything from DPW. And she has had one conversation with DPW uh, that they would like to have a meeting set up so that their contractor that provides um, the, the lighting fixtures to the town can meet with Mandy and um, Anna the two co council co-sponsors and uh, uh, Mandy said that uh, she does not think that we need to put this as a high priority uh, because uh, they would want to have that meeting and see how that works out beforehand and uh, she she would like to see it done uh, something done within this term of the council but uh, she doesn't feel it has to be a pressing issue. So um, that was one. And uh, Jennifer raised a question with me and that I discussed briefly with Athena, which was um, why the participatory budgeting was put in our direction. And there's a little bit of, um, uh, you know, we we, in, we need to have it's it's a conversation that should be in the public meeting and uh, it uh, um, it was referred uh, why it was referred in 2021 to this committee as opposed to another committee is probably like many of the things that there's no place that was obviously this is the perfect place for it. And so you end up uh, probably Linda ends up looking for just a referral 
because it's got to go to some place. It ended up with us. Uh, it is an issue that uh, was in the charter. So um, I think we and the commission was appointed and did a lot of work uh, in putting together their report. Uh, so I think we need to give it at least some response. Uh, George? I'm wondering why we just don't table it. I personally don't see any point in spending time on it. There's no money for it. Um, economically, it's just it's not practical. There is a mechanism for people to bring individual bring particular projects already. Um, and uh, in Cambridge, places like that where they have you know huge budgets and uh, large scale projects, uh, maybe this sort of thing makes sense, but uh, I don't see the point of it. Um, and I would I would consider tabling it to a time indefinite, just and not have to talk about it for the next couple of months because we have much more important things to do. And maybe I'm the only person who feels that way. But otherwise, we should put it on the agenda and have a long conversation about it. But um, I think we have a lot more important things to do. Um, I don't hear anybody. Uh, maybe I'll hear it now, but I don't hear anybody, you know, pounding the table saying this is something important. We've got to move it forward. I certainly haven't heard that from the council. Um, and uh, they just threw it to us. And my feeling is that at this point, I'm not hearing from the public. Um, so why don't we just table it and move on to something else? You have a motion? I, I would suggest not not acting on that right now because it's not on the agenda for, as an action item. It's uh, on That's the agenda true. for committee goals and meeting plans. So I, I would suggest if you're asking the committee to make that sort of recommendation that you wait until it's on an agenda and then tab um, tabling indefinitely would be a recommendation to the council to table it indefinitely. Um, so why don't we with that one, uh, schedule it for an agenda, let the people know who served on the uh, commission, the participatory budgeting commission, that I think Meg Cage would be the most likely one to be interested in meeting with us. Let them make the presentation and then if we end up with the motion that George was suggesting might be the appropriate motion, did that come for discussion when we at that point but we probably do need to have one more one meeting where we take it up and put it on the agenda and let people who were advocates for participatory budgeting at least come forward uh, so sound acceptable okay Anything else, Jennifer? Your hand is up. So. No, I was just going to say it's interesting because you and your uh, Councilor Ryan were on the council in 2021 when it got referred because the last council session, like I really don't know a lot, you know, it was not part of our conversation. I don't recall it ever being part of the conversation. So so it's obviously, uh, so it would be helpful to have members of that, that committee come in just because I think all the rest of us could actually, it, it would just be helpful to have a little update. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you have to go back to the uh, charter. The charter required that there be a participatory budgeting commission that looked into the issue. The council um, was required to make the appointment of the commission. And once they were appointed, they were and did the, uh, you know, did their work with due diligence. Um, Kathy might have been the one who was on the mission as a counselor, I'd have to go back and look, but I think that's right. Uh, so, you know, it was not, it wouldn't have been anything that the council would have come up with on its own. We came up with it because it's in the charter, the charter required we do it. And I think at this point, there was no requirement that participatory budgeting be adopted, there was a requirement that we look into it. And uh, 
I think at this point, it may be that uh, what, uh, what George was saying is where we end up, but it might be worth just closing it out because uh, Charter required it and it's sort of just been hanging there and it doesn't serve any purpose to leave it, leave it hanging. Uh, Athena? Um, if if you're not done with this part, I I can wait. I was going to raise some other issues that are going to come up for TSO. Okay. Future agenda item. I think we're done. Does anybody else have anything else to say about that? So let's see if we can find an appropriate time. The reason that I pushed this one, that I actually might want to push this one, is that uh, if things like street lights and waste hauler are requiring that we get in Henry Street and others are requiring reports. What can we dispose of early? And uh, it seems like two things we can knock off the list fairly quickly and have them out of the way so that we have time for those other issues that uh, may take more time is just to get, get them done. And then we don't have to think about them anymore. And they, you know, do we really want to leave them as a carryover for two years from now? You know, to, Amherst College would say no, and uh, they want to get it done. And as far as participatory budgeting, there's nothing to be gained. Uh, George, and then we get back to Athena on the other issues. Yeah, just a question about the agenda. Are we still on item five? Um... And is Athena speaking to item five, or are we going to upcoming agenda items? Is this uh, they kind of run together? I think. It's, okay. So, is there a host of things that uh, in your summary that I appreciated very much that you gave us all from our first meeting? Um, there are a host of issues here that um, you know at some point, maybe not today, but at some point, we want to talk about how important they are to us. What we'd like to. Um, look at or not look at. Um, You've mentioned streetlights. Um, uh, there's the waste hauler bylaw. Um, there's the Transportation Commission, the role of TAC and TSO. Our, there's our committee website and what we want to do with it, if anything, what we can do with it, what we'd like to do with it. Um, so I'm just throwing some and then some other things that were in that summary that I would think would be appropriate topics for five. Um, if not today, at some point soon. Um, okay, well, let's come back to it. Let's see, what, Athena, what were, you, what were you thinking of? I did want to make a note about the participatory budgeting requirements in the charter. Um, the charter requires as part of that participatory budgeting commission that they propose a measure to the council that the council would act on, and there's a timeline for the council to act on it. The commission didn't really a measure to the council. It was, you know, more wide ranging than that. You'll see in the report. So I think that the we could consider that disposed of in terms of the charter requirements. And then I also wanted to mention there are going to be some things coming to TSO um, probably from the council in the next couple of meetings. There are some public way issues that are coming up, um, including some action on the North Pleasant Street pedestrian improvements that um, that's in the carryover report. There was less urgency about dealing with those um, last year, but I think something something is moving forward now. And so um, we're going to be looking for uh, some more information from Guilford Mooring, the superintendent of DPW in the next few weeks. Um, there's also um, some town manager appointments coming um, probably March 4. So prior to March 4, we'll ask TSO to review those. And then if there's a meeting before March 4. So. Um, no, I, I don't, I'm not sure if there is a meeting before March 4. So they might have to. There isn't. <clears throat> yeah, I think the next TSO meeting is March 14, 
And then the council meeting is on the 18th. I, I know the town manager wanted to, the, those to go through TSO, so the timing might change. Um, and then the Transportation and Parking Commission, we've been waiting for the town manager and the chair of TAC to create their proposal and get it to the council. We were expecting that for February 26. Now it's looking more like March 18 that that will come to the council. And then TSO has been anticipating that come, being referred to, to TSO um, at that meeting. So that could potentially go on the 28th agenda if it's ready um, on March 18. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. Because I think the, the problem we were having at today's meeting, which is why I may want to draw it to close pretty quickly now, is that um, we, we we scheduled the meeting, but we didn't really have an agenda ready for it. Uh, I was trying to sort of use the summary of the meeting and a few quick items so we might be able to tick off. And uh, the Amherst College was thrown at us um, but it was just timing. Jennifer. I don't know if this is time to appropriate time to bring it up, but at the last meeting, we asked towards the end of the last meeting, and Paul was here, if we could have the waste hauler RFI response report presented at the next meeting on March. I think it's 14th or 15th. And Paul seemed, you know, wrote it down and shook his head yes. So I just want to confirm that we will have that by the next meeting. I, that that I will totally, be communicated. Yeah, I know. And, and as with many of these reports, um, we need to keep pressing for them, but we'll get them when we get them. I will, I will raise that issue with Paul and we need to check with continue to check with DPW on a number of issues because of the uh, engineering report on Henry Street um, is still out there. And I think that the, we'll want to get to Henry Street pretty quickly when we have a report that actually um, we can act on. But right now we can't do anything. So that's... Uh, Kind of where we're at but uh, so i think that i need to check with cpw and i need to check with paul and uh the only other issue you raised uh whether we want to continue talking about it was the uh question of the website the committee website and I responded to George about that a little bit in an email. <laughs> Basically, it seemed to me that I didn't have any clarity as to what the purpose of the website was and why whether it would be appropriate for a committee to have uh, a website that was covering more issues than uh, covered by the committee the other committees that because Athena manages them and they contain our agendas and our packets and uh, committee business uh, for people who are interested in that. But um, other issues that the committee deals with uh, don't, don't have large presence, whether they be finance or zoning and planning issues, the finance committee and the CRC don't make them part of their website. They are handled elsewhere. Those issues are handled elsewhere within the town website. So uh, I, I little I mystified George as to what the purpose would be of being different with this website, this page than other page, committee pages. Can't get the raised hand function to work. It's technology. Um, we're the town services and outreach committee. Um, we're kind of where the rubber meets the road. Most of the things that people complain about or concerned about have questions about sidewalks, streets, potholes, lights, 
um, you know, senior services, recreation, fields. These are all services the town provides. And I've always seen this committee as kind of a, you know, a, 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 to listen and hear what the residents are saying about how well the town is doing with the services. Um, also, in terms of outreach, I, I don't see why it hurts to have links uh, to certain things, at least that, um, as we learned today, it's not easy actually to find uh, how to make a complaint about uh, snow and ice. And, uh, you know, uh, Rob is going to look into it, but it's been that way for a long time, and I don't think it's probably near the top of his priority list. Um, it would be a simple matter for us simply to to have that link. Um, there's also a link to the uh, the list of streets, the sort of the, the paving uh, uh, list uh, in terms of the quality of streets. And if you took a look at the town manager's recent list of streets that are to be paved and you compare that to the uh, the, the map, the, the, that site that shows what streets are in what condition, the, the red streets are the most seriously damaged, um, there's a correlation. Um, I just think that we could perhaps play a role in helping people um, better understand how things work and how not only you know, just how they work and also if they need to make a complaint, there's another way they can do it. Um, right now, it's not an easy thing uh, to uh, if you have an issue with uh, snow or ice, for instance, or with a hedge um, uh, to figure out how to go about it. Um, so I think perhaps this is a discussion for another meeting on an agenda item, um, but I do think there's a place for our website, um, and uh, I'd like us to talk about it. Maybe not now, but at some point in, in the agenda um, future. David? Thank you. I would like to refer the committee to the committee's charge because that is very specific in terms of what the committee's role and responsibility is in terms of outreach and um, and town services. Um, the town services are administered by the town manager. And so the committee is really not advising the council about the administration of the town services provided by the town senior services or anything like that. So I would just want to frame the committee's discussion in a way that makes it clear that the committee isn't going to be advising the town manager about how to do his job. Um, I also wanted to add that within the committee's charge is um, to work with the community participation officers to engage the community. And I think that that could be a method that the committee can take up some of the outreach um, issues that you brought up, George. And um, I think that as Andy mentioned in the, his email, um, I, I don't know that people look and this might be a question that Angela can help answer as the um, she's the executive assistant to the town manager and um, one of our remaining community participation officers. I know they're staffed a little thin at the moment, um, but I think we could ask her to come and speak with the committee about those types of outreach efforts. I don't know that people look to the TSO website to find that kind of information, but I think it it could be really useful to counselors to have a document with links that they can refer their constituents to with some of those frequently asked questions of counselors, like, you know, where do I find this? How do I complain about that? I think that that is a great idea. And TSO heard a presentation from um, DPW staff, um, I wanna say a year or two ago, Andy, you probably remember about um, paving roads and how roads- This is field, yeah. Right, yeah. so um, a link to that presentation might be helpful in that document. So I think that we can put something together. I'm not sure that it lives on the TSO page or if that's the most, um, or if it, or if maybe it lives on the council page as resources for constituents or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if the committee is open to that, we can ask the chair to put it on a future agenda item. And if you think it would be worth asking Angela to to attend, to share her perspective. I, um, she's has great um, community involvement and ties with the community. So I think she could probably offer some good perspective as well. Mm. 
agreement that we should follow up on that and with Angela. Like I see nodding heads. I, yeah, I see the, the logic of perhaps putting it in a particular place on the council page rather than on TSO. Um, I'd like to, if I may, um, push back a little bit on the thought that, you know, what our charge is and what our role is. And um, we're not trying to tell the town manager how to do his job. But I do think we have a role as a place where people can come to talk to us about um, how successful or unsuccessful they feel town services are for them. Um, and we listen. And it's a place for them to come and talk and, and communicate to us what they think is working and what they think isn't. Um, I guess you could say they could take that to Paul as well. But and that they certainly can and they do. Um, and maybe that is, but I, I just see a role for us in that. Um, and if I'm missing something here, then may, I maybe need to be uh, schooled. But um, don't others feel that this is a place where people can come uh, to talk to their, uh, to a committee that deals with town services about what they like or don't like about how our services are being uh, done? And it's not that we're going to then tell Paul what he needs to do, but uh, uh, I think I think an example would be the age of dementia study. This town is great at creating studies. They get out, put on a shelf and they stay there. Um, I would think that one thing we could do at some point is have committee members just look through the executive summary of that um, and maybe also talk to uh, members of the Council on Aging about um, what they think is working, what they think isn't. Um, don't we have a role there? Thank you. If if a, a member wanted to go ahead, I can wait. If there were other comments, Let's see anyone? Well, I think that um, again, you you'd need to look at the charge. The charge is very specific in terms of what the committee does and doesn't do. I think, from my perspective, it's within the purview of every individual counselor to hear from their constituents and take that into consideration when they're asking the town manager questions and evaluating the town manager and so on. But getting into the provision of town services is I think potentially crossing the line into the administration of town services rather than reviewing and making recommendations to the council on measures that may affect the provision of services to the community by a town department. I don't think anything that you've mentioned is a measure or comes as a measure that affects the provision of services. It They're all, you know, instituting a, a policy or a plan for the senior center um, on the age and dementia friendly issues isn't it's not a measure that's in front of the council at this moment. So I, I think it's worth discussing more about what the committee can do in terms of those, those kinds of things. But I would just caution you to look at the charge and consider how the committee's work can support the council in that way. And using the committee as a a venue for residents to come and talk to counselors, I think might create the perception that that's the only place that residents can talk to counselors. George? Well, I would like this to be put on an agenda, a future agenda item, um, to have us talk about this at some uh, greater length about what we can and cannot do. Um, uh, I don't see a problem. Well, I think we need to, to talk about it. So I would ask that it be put on a future agenda um, sooner rather than later. And I'd very much like to hear what my colleagues think. I mean, I may be the only one and um, that's fine. Then I lose. Um, but I do think there's a role for us here. Um, and I think we just need to, to think about it as a group and uh, take into consideration Athena's point about the charge. We need to read it more carefully. Um, but I do see this as a place where um, we can have conversations with constituents about town services. Um, and as a committee, we can then um, I mean, just become better informed about what the town does and doesn't do and how well it does and doesn't do it. Um, I think not only with seniors, but with our, our fields, recreation, 
Um, where else does this take place? I, I don't understand. Where else where else does this take place? Uh Jennifer, and then I have, I'll come back to you to what you just said, but Jennifer. I think that's a very good suggestion for it to be a uh, future agenda item so we can discuss this. I haven't been on TSO before, but it's I mean I, I think it is um you know worth discussing. And could we maybe this would be part of the discussion, have public um hearings or what we call them forums. Could the could the committee have a forum where people can come and share their concerns and ask questions about town services. I know in you know in CRC we've had community forums. Yeah, uh, Shalini in the last council did try and develop a very complex process approach to dealing with what the outreach role is of the council. And uh, I think that it actually got to be, she she made it so complex that it was actually hard to get one's hands around it entirely. But uh, the thought was there and was through her work that we actually did have some discussions in that direction. Uh, no, I've always felt that uh, the best we have is the district meetings, is a place where you get real dialogue and public comment, which can come to any committee on issues that are relevant to it. Because planning issues uh, get a get, if they're going to be in public comment and they're not at council meetings or at CRC. On services here, financial issues and finance. Uh, so uh, we'll try and work that on the agenda. Athena and I will have a good time trying to figure out with Paul what the next what the agenda plan is now. But what my thought was is that we. I would try and, uh, as a next step, map out the meetings for this year and press Paul and uh, DPW on some of these reports that are coming and then try and figure out what is the logical order, when we're going to get the reports back that enable us to move forward on all of the issues that we identified through the last meeting. And I will uh, broaden this beyond website because I think it is you were looking to the website to do something as being the council contact point for people in the community to raise questions about town services. So I might talk to you, George, about reframing it that way a little bit. So is there anything else that people have for today? looking at the uh, there are the minutes to approve and some of the agenda items there was a standard format for the agenda that came from the last TSO and that's what that was Jennifer no, I just did have one question um did last last council session did TSO have a representative to TAC or was it that the council had a representative or neither um, I was liaison and uh, from TSO. Well, what we had said was is that the council, when it appointed committee liaisons, would try and have it be somebody from TSO. And I think that I would like to continue to have a um, the liaison be somebody on our committee, but I've not nominating myself for that role. But again, that would be for the council when we get to that. I, I think, don't want our council uh, agenda. Athena is said on the next agenda for the council as far as finishing out the uh, the assignments. 
Um, we're waiting on a recommendation from GOL. It's in front of GOL first. They're meeting on the 22nd. So if they are able to make a recommendation at their meeting on the 22nd, then it will be on the council mm -hmm. agenda for the 26th. And GOL is working on which committees we should seek to have liaisons for. Ultimately, it's a council decision. Um, GOL will recommend these are the committees that that GOL thinks makes sense to have liaisons, but the council appoints liaisons, and so that'll be an ultimate decision and discussion at the council on the, hopefully the 26th. Okay, well, thank you. So uh, I'm assuming the TAC will be on because I, it's probably a question of what to add, not what to subtract. And uh, I would like to, I, I would hope that it will be somebody from this committee again because of the natural connection. And I would urge all of you to consider whether you would like to take over that role. Um, not that I'm unwilling to do it. I think it would be better to have it be somebody other than the chair. George? So I'm just looking at my own notes here and thinking about future agenda items. I'm thinking particularly about March. We meet again on March 14, is that correct? That's our next meeting? Yes. And, and yeah, I'm just trying to, we will have some town manager appointments, it sounds like. Yeah, um, I mean, I think that the big thing on the 14th is going to be uh, why I can't come up with a specific item is if the engineering report is available for Henry Street or the um, RFI is ready for presentation. Uh, those are two major issues and they will then take over we won't uh, uh, par pardon me the the north pleasant street um pedestrian improvements might be ready for march 14 as well and the other two that we're expecting from dpw might be ready by then if they're referred to tso from the council which i think is the expectation yeah i mean we're waiting for something from dpw about mm -hmm. it because they have to decide that they actually have uh funds that they can make available within their budget to actually do the work. And that was where it was being put off. Right, I think, right, exactly. And I think now they they are ready to take next steps. And so they'll be looking for TSO to make a recommendation on at least part of the plan that they've, um, they've asked for approval. So would they be making a presentation to us and then we would consider it and at the next meeting we would act on it? Um, we certainly, or were they gonna just put something in the packet and then we would ask questions? Um, how is this gonna play out or do we know? My expectation at the moment is that they, they will wouldn't... come from DPW. There's North Pleasant, which is already in front of TSO. And Good. then there's two others that are gonna come before the council probably March 4. And so if those two others are referred to TSO at that time, um, then TSO can take them up at the meeting on the 14th if, if the chair decides to put it on the agenda for the 14th. Um, if that's the case, then the committee will have all the materials that the council saw to discuss. And um, I would okay. expect that um, the DPW superintendent would be available to answer questions and have that discussion with the committee. Okay. Okay. Are we also um, going to invite uh, Amherst College and Jason Skills to talk about the Amherst uh, sign for the next meeting? Or is that a possibility? Is that that's something that could be on the March 14 agenda? I mean, I'll just note it. It could be. It could yeah. be. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we have some town manager appointments we think will be on the agenda next time? Possibly. Good, okay. So I'm just, in my own mind, just trying to get a sense of what what's coming. Um, We'd like to review the committee charge at some point. And again, that'll be up to the chair to decide when, but I'd like that sooner rather than later. And we were talking about inviting Angela at some point to talk about the whole issue of outreach, our website, and just communicating with. Um, so those are those are the items I'm seeing and others may see others, but I'm not saying they'll all be on the agenda on March 14th, but um, uh, I'd like them not to get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. And as you think about, as you look, any of you look at the committee charge, if the recommendation wants to come from this committee to change the charge, then it has to go back through 
a process that involves GOL and ultimately the council as a whole, we cannot change the charge ourselves. That, that's what I was going to speak to, if it's okay, Andy. Um, GOL chair um, Anna Devlin Gothier, I, I believe she reached out to all the committee chairs asking that the committees put review of their charge on the, one of their upcoming agendas so that GOL has that feedback and, and they do an annual review of the um, council committee organization. Okay, so we'll move that fairly quickly then. Thank you. Uh, so make that high and Jennifer. You know, so do we agree that Jason Skeels didn't have to come back to the committee and talk about the sign that you would talk to him? I'm just trying to think for you know, efficiency's sake. We'll have to coordinate uh, that through the town manager. Right. So I thought we kind of agreed that if you if if we could it could be communicated to us that Jason Skeels feels that the sign is not obstructing um vision for for drivers, that he wouldn't have to come to the committee. I think that's probably uh, there were yeah there were two issues one was yeah. the distraction issue and the other was the visibility issue um, but yes I think we agreed that um, if he could answer it without having to be here fine I I like to yeah. see him but that's all right <clears throat> yes if Paul had been able to be with us he would have made notes on that so we will get notes to him on it good and report to. Paul about today's meeting and what it is we're looking for to do. Is there anything else that we need to talk about today? If not, I think we should let ourselves go. And so I'll uh, no arguments there <laughs> during the meeting. Uh, thank you, thank you, Andy. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you, Athena. Yeah. Bye.